Hello and welcome to this talk. It's nearly Tuesday the 8th of November. Now I've been getting a lot of questions from a lot of people uh, asking about this quite a lot of concern. It's an official publication from the World Health Organization uh, combating um, misinformation online. What is this going to mean? And I'm also going to tie this in with a completely unrelated topic, which is vested interests in uh, regulatory authorities. But just before we do that, um, there's a, a lot. There's a scam going around. Um, someone's taken out an email, and it's called something like John Campbell Official. Now, if it's got official in the title, it's not me. Now, there is an email you can contact me on. It's here. Uh, it's that one. And I'll put it in the description. Now, I do get a lot of messages a day and I do try and answer most of them, as many as I can. I just run out of time, basically. So if I don't answer quickly, then my apologies. I do try and answer the ones I can. But if it's got John Campbell official, remember, it's not me. It's a scam. And while we're at it, uh, while we're talking about scams, rather a pro well, no, I won't say anything there. Um, um, when we're talking about scams, um, there's a people have nicked my picture, and they call it various John Campbell type things. But what they can't nick is this tick here. So if there's a tick there, that means it's from me. If there's not a tick, it means it's not from me. Now, let's get straight on to this uh, here, this article, Combating Medical Misinformation. Um, now, what's this going to mean for, for example, this, this channel? And the answer is I don't quite know yet, but I'm not pretty, I'm not very comfortable about it at the moment. So um, the, the World Health Organization here works uh, with social media policy departments to ensure uh, the company policy and guidelines for content providers are fit for purpose it's hard to argue with that isn't it who provide a helpful guide on how to report misinformation online so if there's anything that you think is misinformation this can be reported to youtube uh, and in fact any uh, any of the social media outlets so helpfully the world health organization provide uh, information on how to report uh, misinformation online and here are basically all of the, all of the online, uh, all of the online things that, that people use. Very helpful of the World Health Organization to put this in. It's almost as if they want to have an influence over all parts of social uh, media. But they helpfully put that in there. Um, so inaccurate information uh, spreads uh, really quite quickly. They're saying making it more difficult for the public to identify verified facts. Verified facts. I suppose that's verified facts as opposed to facts that aren't verified, but, but th there you go. Verified facts. Um, hopefully it won't be alternative facts, uh, but just uh, facts. From one single source, the World Health Organization, in all its uh, brilliant people that work there. And also uh, our local health authorities. Now, the thing that concerns me, as a starting point, only uh, UK NHS organisations are being invited to self-certify against the NHS standard for creating health content. Now, I have worked uh, for the NHS and in ed via education for the NHS for, for over 40 years, but I am not the NHS so how this is going to affect me, I don't know. Will I still be allowed to create content? Will the content I have created be allowed to persist? It would be um, alarming if it's not, because the, the, I've, I've done, I started doing content. I did all the anatomy physiology, all the pathophysiology, all the disease processes, how to recognise all the diseases, all the basic things that everyone, need, all, the, all the nurses and doctors in the world need to learn when they're starting training. I covered all of that. And if that was taken down, that would be a pity because I do know it is extensively used in Africa, for example. Um, so hopefully they wouldn't tie that with the same brush. But we, we really don't know at the moment uh, because I am not the NHS. Um by, by uh, completing the self-certification process, an NHS organisation channel. See, I'm not an NHS organisation channel. Um, I don't officially represent the NHS. So quite how this is going to affect us, we really don't know at the moment. And also, um, we've, there's information here, 
which isn't where some of this come from, not entirely clear at the moment what's going to happen on this. Um, not entirely clear. Now, um, let me, sorry, I wasn't showing you the screen then. The, 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 this is the screen here that we were looking at just then. So not entirely clear. The links are there. If you can make clear sense of this, then then please do. But it's not looking, it's not looking good for people that aren't sponsored working for official organizations um which will of course have an authority uh, an authority structure and people in them have career structures that they don't want to jeopardize now whether it's, whether whether independent channels like mine are going to be taken down or whether they're going to be put down in the algorithm is not yet clear not yet clear so if it is that they're just being put down in the algorithm i've never i've never said this before i hate it but if you are subscribed i've never said this before i promise but if you subscribe and hit that bell icon you do get a notification when i put a video up so whether youtube choose to put my videos in that long list of sort of thumbnail videos you get on the right of the screen or not wouldn't matter um do apologize for saying that but it, it probably would it probably would help and i've never said that before because it's so corny um but there you go i've said it now i've said it now now um this paper here is from the british medical journal so we're going to be using official organizations fair enough so an official organizations of course they have the professional people in them of the highest possible integrity no possibility of bias there whatsoever uh we would hope in these official uh organizations but the, the british medical journal is a little more cynical than me and they've done this article here from fda to mhrna uh, are drug regulators for hire um Dear me, what, what a cynical bunch uh, British Medical Journal are, really. But let's look at something about what they're saying here and see if there's anything in it. Do check out the reference for yourself. Regulatory agencies, uh, large proportions of their budgets, funded by the institutions they are sworn to regulate. Hmm. Interesting. So a large proportion of their budgets are sworn by the people they... Um, they're, they're funded by the ind industry they're supposed to be regulating. Now, of course... Obviously, this won't make any difference, will it? They'll still be objective and independent. Um, so, um, US Food and Drug Administration, for example. Now, what happened here uh, in the FDA in 1992? Before this, it was funded by the uh, federal government, I'm pretty sure, or individual states, I'm not quite sure, but it was, it was certainly uh, publicly funded. Then 1992, there was the Prescription Drug User Fee Act, which allowed the industry basically to chip into the FDA through user fees. Now, in 1993, these fees amounted to $29 million. In 2016, um, this amounted to uh, $884 million. So that's what's five, four, four, six years ago now. Uh, point eight four of a billion dollars now this 65 percent of the budget is the current figure don't know quite what it was then now of course no one's saying that uh 880 million dollars will buy any influence i mean it's only 0.84 of a billion dollars um so it's very kind of industry to to supply the fda with this the, the these uh useful sums of money and interestingly enough uh in the food and drug administration night this is from the british medical journal Nine out of ten of, of its past commissioners between 2006 and 2019 went on to secure roles linked with pharmaceutical companies. Yeah, interesting coincidence. Um, I mean, no one's saying this would have any influence, of course. It's just a coincidence or people that happen to work in that particular area. But nine out of ten, well, it's 90%, isn't it? But there you go. Um, now, um, European Medicines Agency... Uh, industry uh, fees funded 20% of the European Medicines Agency in 1995. 2010, it was 75%. Today, it's 89% of the budget. So 89% of the budget, but no, no influence on the professional discretion and decision-making of the uh, individuals concerned, we would hope. Um, Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Authority in the United Kingdom. 86% of the funding comes from pharmaceutical industry. 
Are these the official bodies that we want to adjudicate over what health information we are given? Over which drugs are good for us, which drugs are bad for us? Is this really who we want to make these decisions, given that the amount of funding they're receiving from uh, what some people some people might consider to be vested interests? Now, I've got a table here, and I know you can't read this, but... Um, TGA in Australia is 96% of the budget, proportion of the budget derived from industry. Europe it's 89. It's actually, it seems to have gone up in Europe. Um, I know, 89, that's right. Um, UK, uh, 86. Uh, Japan, 85%. US, 65%. Canada, 50.5%. So if you look at the Australian government site here, for example, it's an extreme example, but you can see that this has got the Australian government logo, the um, Therapeutic Goods Administration, all looks nice and official. Um, there's the Australian government flag on it. I'm not picking on Australia particularly. Um, all, all of the agencies look nice and official, government registered. But the proportion of the TGA budget derived from industry is a whapping 96%. But of course, the UK is only 86% funded. We're talking about large amounts of money, which have no influence on decision making, we would hope. And yet it's these official agencies that are going to decide what health information you and I are going to receive. If you're uncomfortable with this, write to your MP about it or something like that. WHO funding. Um, this is actually from the World Economic Forum. Russell Brand wouldn't be happy with this at all, would he? Um, reject cookies. Um, so that talks about um, the funding there. A um, couple of links for it uh, here. Um and just one thing that's interesting there, um, again, I'm sure there's no undue influence, but uh, the second biggest funder is the uh, doctor, I mean, Mr. Bill Gates and Melinda Gates uh, Foundation, 9.8% of the whole budget. Um, and uh, obviously that's not, we're not saying that's going to affect uh, WHO uh, impartiality. Okay, um, now, um, I, I'm mumming and ahhing whether to go. I, th I think it will, but because I mean, I was just browsing through the appendix of a um, book published in 1948. So, what, uh, what the author did was he changed that to 1984. The late and great George Orwell. Um, now, just a few, just a few things popped out at me and. Um, make of them what you will. It's, this is just literature, of course. It's fiction. It was expected that new speak would finally have superseded old speak, or standard English, as we should call it, by about the year 2050. That kind of, <clears throat> that kind of jumped out at me. 20, what, 27 years? <clears throat> and let's hope it doesn't get there before that. I kind of like old speak. That's the one I brought up with. Um... The purpose of Newspeak was not only to provide a medium of expression for the worldview and mental habits proper to the devotees of Insoc, uh, but to make other modes of thought impossible. That is ominous. Uh, to make other modes of thought impossible. And then the other, the other one that hit me was... Um, the C vocabulary was supplementary to the others and consisted entirely of scientific and technical terms. These resembled the scientific terms in use today and were considered and were constructed from the same roots, but the usual care was taken to define them rigidly and strip them of undesirable meanings. So uh, <laughs> make of that what you will. And of course, war is not peace, freedom is not slavery, and ignorance is not strength. So that's basically what I wanted to say today. Now, um, I'm actually um, going to a bit of a 
gig uh, next uh, next uh, Monday. Here it is. I put the link in. Um, oh, there's Doctor Asimlock, who he's the brilliant cardiologist we interviewed uh, last week. Now. Um, the, the, the links there, the, this is has big pharma hijacked evidence-based medicine with a question mark. Now, I have no idea. That, that's why I'm going to the conference. I thought it would be interesting. I'm not actually speaking, but I've agreed to be on the Q&A panel. So if you want to come, you can ask me any question you like. I don't guarantee you'll get a, a lucid answer, but, but there you go. If you're in the London area, I think it's about 11 quid just to cover expenses. Um, and that's the nearest thing you'll get to a commercial on this channel. Uh, remember, if there's an email or there's a comment that appears to be from me and it's asking for money or giving financial advice, it's not from me, it's a scam. And we don't want scams, do we? Thank you for watching.